Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome to a beautiful day in Houston, Texas. Well, more like a night, but either way, it's a great day. Uh, I had a very uh, productive day, I think, for the most part. Um, I did kind of like get a stiff neck a couple weeks ago. I think it was one of those, uh, I think nerve, what, I forgot what they were called. Uh, it's like a nerve impingement. So it was kind of hard for me to move around, but I still did some stuff for my cars. And of course I had to work, but for the most part, I really just kind of sat down, relaxed, and watched TV for the last two weeks. So I haven't really been able to do too much. I feel a lot better now. Um, still probably won't be able to work in my car for probably another week. That's what it feels like. Uh, in terms of like heavy duty stuff, when I, mean by that, when I mean by that is I mean like the WRX and getting under the car, putting up on jack stands, um, that type of stuff. Uh, but I do have some work coming up, very excited to do. So um, definitely want to be prepared for that, get some good rest. Um, but while I'm waiting uh, kind of for that time to pass through, I do have some stuff that I am going to do. It is nighttime uh, the day before. Uh, I am going to take my cars out tomorrow. But I have my keys all set up. Um, this is actually my foreigner key. But I got the GS350, the GR Corolla, the RCF, and, of course, my WRX, which, I, which is actually on jack stands. I'm not sure if I showed you guys already. Um, but tonight... I am going to go ahead and do the dash detailing stuff. Uh, this is Optum, um, what is it called, OptiPro? It's called OptiPro Leather Pro Protectant. Um, I actually don't use it for the leather. I actually use it for my vinyl. I like this stuff a lot. It does, say, it does claim to have a lot of UV, UV resistant. And one good thing I do like about it, and this is what my uh, previous detailer told me uh, back when I used to take my car to a detailer. He told me that this stuff actually forms a like a layer like a protective layer on the dash so it actually cures onto the vinyl so it does protect it for about he said about a year so he says you apply it about once a year which i have been doing i don't even know if it's really necessary but i've been doing it to my gs350 since 2013 and that car i believe just in terms of garaging it and not driving it that much uh it really hasn't shown too much age uh, but it's hard to tell if it was because of this stuff or not. But hey, if it's working, it's working. Don't try to change anything, I suppose. And of course, I got the C-Quartz fabric. I'm not sure if I really am going to apply this on the RCF. I actually put it on the RCF back in December when I got the car back. So I'm not going to put any on there. Uh, the GS350, I'm going to have to take a look and see how much of it is left on. You can actually feel this stuff on the GS350. But definitely the GR Corolla, I haven't put it on yet. So when I take it out to drive... Uh, when I take the GR Corolla out tomorrow to drive, I'll probably do it in the driveway before I go in or at least um, you know, have it parked in the garage with the garage doors up and some of my cars backed out so I can keep all the doors open. Um, you, have to put that, you have to apply that C-Course fabric in a, a very well-ventilated area um, because that stuff is like really strong and it definitely has that, I guess, the poisonous smell. Like It's very noxious um, if you don't uh, you know, spray this stuff in open air and uh, let it dry. Of course, I used to put it on with like microfiber towel and and uh, I guess one of these fabric towels. It's really dirty, I don't wanna use that. But definitely I started using applicators, these foam applicators, and these are by far the best for applying like any stuff or detailing in my opinion, except for maybe cleaning windows. You, I would use this. I mean, everything, seems to go on nice and evenly and honestly you don't have to use as much product because it's not being soaked up by the towel when you use these foam applicators you just spray on the foam applicator or in the area that you're going to spray it, and then you just use the applicator to put it on um, but yeah anyways going on i'm also going to check my tire tread depths for all of my cars uh, this is always good to do every three to four months it's just an easy way to make sure that your tires are wearing properly to make sure your alignment is good and uh, also, of course, for my all-wheel drive cars, my GR Corolla and my WRX, you got to make sure all the wheels are within, I believe it's 1 16th of uh, tolerance. So no wheel can be more than 1 16th uh, off in terms of tread depth. Otherwise, it may kind of screw up the differentials of the car. Um, so we'll probably do that too as well. Um, I usually do a field test too along the treads just to make sure the treads are even, uh, evenly wearing as well. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and do the WRX first and get that uh, taken care of. All right, guys. Well, I already applied on the WRX with the applicator. It went on really nice. I wanted to let it cure before I showed you guys, but it looks a lot shinier. Everything looks great. 
Um, I only apply it really to the areas I know will be in the sun. So just basically like this top part of the uh, door, door pocket. Uh, and then of course I do that part as well because um, I put my arm there sometimes. And then I did, you know, of course the whole dash, but it is like really shiny. If you can tell, it, it didn't look this shiny before. It's a very, it was kind of dull, my dash for my WRX. And I applied it also to, you know, the, the council area. And of course I did the back uh, door pockets as well. Um, but it definitely works really well. Uh, if you have any dust, it just gets rid of the dust right away. It actually says on the bottle that it actually repels dust as well. I don't really know if that's true because I see tons of dust on my uh, dash usually after a while of having, you know, happy and, and smoochy in here and just driving the car in general. Um, but one thing, good thing I like about this stuff is if your car has like that funk smell after driving it for a long time, especially with uh, my dogs riding in the car, I usually just after a nice vacuum um, and then, you know, putting this Optimum uh, leather protectant on it, the car just basically smells like great again. I mean, of course we don't have smell a vision yet on YouTube, but I mean, it smells decent in here. I also have a uh, air ionizer there that that's always on um, that, that good. That works well intermittently, but yeah, that was pretty easy for the WRX. Um, you know, it's always the first one I applied to, but yeah, I don't know if I already showed you guys, but I did already put it up on the wheel cribs with the jack stands. So I do plan on working on this car. It's going to be probably a pretty long process. I don't know how many months it's going to take because as I work on this car, I'm also going to be working on the GR Corolla, uh, the RCF, and then I do have a couple of items left on the uh, GS350. They're pretty time-consuming stuff, so I have to kind of plan it out. Um, but they are both interior. One of them is an interior modification. The other one is for the trunk. Um, so it's going to be a lighting change on the interior, and then I'm going to probably dynamite the trunk as well for the GS350, which is absolutely a gorgeous car. Um, I think we're gonna go ahead and actually do the GS350 next to apply the, uh, what is it called? Uh, the Optimum Pro vinyl protectant. Um, just kind of looking from here, uh, this is great interior. I mean, it's so well preserved for 10 years, but it has kind of like that sheen that the C-Quartz Finest has. So I'm not sure if I really need to uh, uh, take care of it. All right, guys. Well, I went ahead and finished up the GS350. Uh, it's looking great. Um, I'm not sure if it's fully cured yet, but I'll go ahead and show you guys. The C-Quartz Finest actually is still on the seats, so I didn't really, I don't think I really need to put any on. Um, you know, when I go in on the car, when I sit in the car, it feels pretty good. Everything's real shiny still, and you can kind of, you can actually feel uh, when you sit down the, uh, the C-Quartz Finest on the car, on the seats, because they're kind of slippery a little bit. Uh, but yeah, I went in and already applied the um, Optimum Pro. You can, there's a little bit left here, so it's still curing a little bit. But yeah, it's, when you first put it on, it, it looks really bad. Like it's really uneven and it doesn't, it's kind of streaky. But then if you give it some time, it'll cure. And it goes on like real nice. Like it, you, it's, I guess this is that layer that they're talking about, that nice polymer layer uh, for protection for UV cracking, et cetera, et cetera. But, um, you know, this GS350, I've had it for... 10 years already, believe it or not. Um, now, I don't have a lot of miles on there. It is, uh, I think it's definitely under 20. I think it's actually like 16, 17,000 miles. Um, the paint, I had it corrected when I first got it. So I had the paint corrected and then I PPF'd it. So it basically is retaining like, a, you know, a very pristine coat of paint uh, in the car. Now the smell, after getting, I guess the RCF and the GR Corolla, it. I always felt like it smelled pretty good in here. Um, it still smells pretty good, but I think over time it does have a little bit of old car smell. But I mean, to be honest, if I turn on the AC, it, it smells brand new again. Um, and then when people ride in my car, <laughs> this GS350, they're just really surprised how old the car is. And honestly, a lot of people love this car. Um, they, I don't know what it is. They just they don't really tell me why they like it because I don't think they know themselves, but they know. Um, they, they just point this out as the car that they like the most. Um, honestly, I think it's just the black on black on black. I mean, it's just a very unique, uh, combination of colors that you very rarely see, um, in the car. But yeah, it's a great looking car. Interior smells great. The Seacourse Finest, it's, it's been on there for, I think probably six, seven months, actually. I'm not sure, but it, it hasn't really, um, faded at all. Um, the back I might do just because I've got like a, uh, um, car seat protector on there for my dogs, but 
you know, it's got, it's, it's got to be done in open air. Um, I got to do it with the garage doors open and the doors wide open um, before I can do anything else. And then, so I think right now we'll probably do the uh, GR Corolla. So we'll get to the GR Corolla right now. All right, guys. Well, we finished the GR Corolla. Uh, you know, it's the first time I detailed the car. Um, you know, everything is pretty nice in there. It smelled kind of funky when I was putting in the uh, Optimum Pro. I think the new car smell mixed with the leather uh, vinyl protectant didn't really uh, mesh very well. So it smelled kind of funky in there. Um, it still looks like it's curing. Um, so it... It has kind of like a streaky look. I don't know if you guys can tell through the dash. Uh, it's, it's, it's a little streaky uh, on, the, uh, on the dash. Yeah, you can see a little bit. You can see a little bit of the streaks um, all on the dash from here. But overall, it, it, it's, it should be fine. I got to wait a little bit of time, let it cure. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a soft touch material. This is completely different. This stuff is all soft touch. So I've never really um, use soft touch. I've never actually detailed soft touch before. So hopefully it's not like a completely different type of material. Um, it shouldn't be a big deal. I can always buff it with a microfiber towel if it gets kind of, uh, gloppy, I suppose, if that's really a word, <laughs> but, uh, it, it can't, it went on pretty thick to be honest. Um, I actually may have overdone it, but yeah, this car, I was surprised when I was detailing it cause you start to notice a lot more as you're like cleaning the entire car, but the dash is humongous on this car. I mean, there's so much vinyl I had to cover, um, as well as the doors. The doors were really, like, bulky, I guess, in terms of material. Um, definitely had a lot more than my WRX. I mean, I'm just comparing with my WRX because I feel like they're about the same size. But, yeah, definitely the GR Corolla had a lot more vinyl area uh, to cover um, in terms of just detailing and everything, um, especially the dash. The dash was freaking huge. Um, I don't know if you can tell right here, but it, it kind of like bulges out here. This definitely is not a feature in the WRX, but yeah, this bulge here is quite large. Um, and then that dash area back there is, it goes back a lot further than what I had, uh, I suppose, expected. Um, but overall, I'm hoping I may have to detail, I'm sorry, I may have to buff out the the uh, the layer, the Optimum Pro on the dash. It seems I think I may put it on a little too thick. Um, so I'll take care of that right now, um, and after that, we'll do the uh, RCF. Um, oof, man, that's, that's a, that's a great-looking car. <laughs> All right. All right, well, I did do a little bit of buffing of the uh, GRC dash with the microfiber towel. It looks a little bit better. Um, well, actually, it looks a lot better, but you can still see the streaks on it. Uh, I think it's because of soft-touch material. It's a completely different feel than my... Uh, GS350 and my WRX. My GS350 and my WRX, it's, it's hard plastic for the most part, or it's like a smooth vinyl. Um, it's definitely a lot different. Uh, one thing I noticed is the GR Corolla and the RCF, the vinyl is actually like a, like a matte type of finish, whereas on my GR, I'm sorry, whereas on my WRX and my GS350, it's a lot shinier. So I think when the Optimum Leather stuff kind of cures onto the vinyl, um, it makes it a little bit shinier, so you can definitely see like where there's different like uh, layer levels of the Optimum Pro leather um, curing. Because on my G, uh, my RCF, you can see the same thing. It's kind of like a little. Uh, you can see where there's like high spots. I guess high spots um, where there's too much of the uh, I guess chemical on there compound uh, kind of drying, so it's a little bit shinier. Um, but I'm not too worried about that, I guess. I mean, it's just, I mean, it's, it's plastic and, you know, it's not going to, uh, get ruined or anything. And honestly, I know that that layer is actually a protective layer. Um, so as long as it doesn't cause any too many issues, uh, you know, I'll probably just let it dry off and see what it looks like. But definitely, um, I may need to get a different type of, I guess, coating for, I guess, the matte type of vinyl. Um, to be honest, I kind of, uh, that sucks. But anyways... <laughs> Tomorrow, I'm going to drive my cars. I just wanted to kind of start the vlog tonight uh, since I was going to start working on the cars. Uh, something I do want to do quickly is work on the GR Corolla. Uh, definitely want to put that front lip on there uh, because I want to just get it on first of all. When the bumper is still clean, I can put it on. And of course, uh, I'm, I'm wanting to really put on those scrape guards. And I, you know, you can't put it on the stock bumper and then put the lip on. So... I want to get that lip on as fast as possible so I can put those scrape guards. Um, it's probably going to look really nice. I'm really excited about that. 
So interestingly, the Toms, they only made the carbon fiber Bruce bats for the pre-2020 generation RCF. So the ones that I got, they didn't fit very well on here. So I had to kind of, I guess, do a test fitment. And unfortunately, I'm going to have to custom kind of fit them in. Um, for, I don't think they sold very well. So Toms, I guess, just dis discontinued it for later models. And I don't know why Lexus didn't finish out the RCF. I mean, there's a front lip, there's a side lip, there's a rear diffuser in carbon fiber, and there's a wing. But the, for some reason, they didn't want to do the rear spats. I mean, my WRX, it's got all the whole complete package. You know, I've got the front lip, you know, I've got the side skirts, and I've got the rear spats uh, in the back, as well as the diffuser. So, you know, here's the rear spats, and of course, you know, you guys know I have a diffuser, the the, the stock diffuser, as well as exhaust finishers, you know, and I got the carbon fiber wing. So, I mean, that's another thing I like about STI. I mean, they they really do their, uh, you know, their due diligence to really make these, you know, enthusiast cars that are so much fun. Um, oh, even canards. I mean, even they have offer OEM canards for our cars. So, I mean, it's pretty crazy what is offered for, you know, the the cars that cost literally like five times less than the car I'm looking at. Um, I do know that Lexus did offer a club sports circuit piece here. Um, so I think maybe that explains it because that piece that used to go here on the previous 2020s, uh, the pre 2020 models, it went for like a thousand dollars. So if you can imagine, you know, paying a thousand dollars for rear spats, I personally would be very upset uh, and I wouldn't get them. And the Toms actually was like 600 bucks. I was like really upset about that. But luckily, of course, yen exchange rate, I ended up getting them for I think like 350. Uh, and then shipped to the United States was about 400 bucks. So it, it's a little bit better. I mean, it is carbon fiber. Honestly, to tell you the truth, the Toms, the quality of their carbon fiber isn't, it's okay. Uh, I was a little surprised how kind of cheaply uh, it was made for how much they charge. Um, but at least there's something I could put on there. But it does have to be, custom fitted on there. Um, I do have to do a little bit of filler with some rubber, I guess, gaskets so that there's no water. I mean, sorry, not water. There's no air leakage um, to ruin the, uh, I guess, the aerodynamics, even though I'm pretty sure Tom's didn't really do any aerodynamic, uh, I guess, studies. Oh, there's Smoochie. I just got her a haircut. She's looking really good. Speaking of haircuts, I, I need a haircut too. But I also um, hooked up the GS, I'm sorry, I also hooked up the RCF to the desulfator. Uh, so now actually I have the multi-link, not in full use, but I'm using three of the four channels. Um, so I have, I believe uh, this one right here is actually, this is the RCF, so it's actually charging the RCF right now. As you can tell, it's at 100%. Um, so it's just right now, it's just desulfating and trickle charging. And then of course I got the GS350 and the WRX tied to it. Okay, well it is the next day. It's very beautiful. I think tomorrow it may not be so great, so I definitely want to take the cars out today. I'll do a little ride along in these cars today um, and just kind of talk about, uh, I guess, whatever you want to talk about. Um, yeah, you know, if you guys have any suggestions or questions, you guys are always really good about putting comments in my videos, so I really appreciate that. Um, I'm always glad to answer any questions or just, you know, uh, comment on your comments, I guess would be the best way to put it. All right, well, got the GS down the driveway. Ready to take my dogs out for a walk. It's an okay day, kind of cloudy. Uh, weather tomorrow is not going to be good driving weather. It's probably the best way to put it. Uh, there is the GR Corolla. If you guys want to take a look, let's go ahead and take a uh, better look at it, actually. You know, it's a, it's a fun car to drive so far. Uh, we'll see when it, you know, definitely when I get to take it out on full performance value, I suppose. But, you know, I guess the look, it's interesting. It's a little underwhelming, I would say. I mean, it's still a Corolla. Uh, but definitely, it, it serves a different purpose in terms of enjoyment. Uh, I definitely would rank it, I would still rank it behind the look, in terms of looks behind my WRX. Uh, I definitely like my RCF uh, in terms of looks the most. It just has such an aggressive look. And of course the GS is, I mean, it's a beautiful car. I mean, I think just uh, with the custom wheels and you know the whole body kit and everything. And of course, taking good care of this paint was very vital in terms of uh, you know having a good look for the car. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get inside. Uh, I would say the seats on this car, 
Um, I would definitely, you know, honestly, I, I, I don't know if it's, I, I kind of like this better than the Alcantara. Um, but uh, Alcantara, I think, is, is real nice, too. I, I don't really know. I guess this would be a tie. But I'm definitely glad that I have this to compare with the Alcantara. I mean, the interior, <laughs> it still looks immaculate after 10 years. I think it's because I don't really drive it. I mean, I only have 18,700 miles on this car. Um, so it's still kind of a very very new car in terms of mileage um something i did think about was the tires for this car i do have the all seasons um i'd like to change it out to probably super sports uh, maybe uh, something else i'm not really sure i guess i have to look at the pricing uh, i mean i only think i think i only put like maybe three thousand miles on these tires i mean i didn't really put a lot in the last four years and then you're supposed to replace tires every six years uh, I think I might try to push it to eight. The all seasons are quite nice too. Um, they, they feel just as sporty to be honest with you. Uh, so I might just stick with those considering I have already have PS4s on my RCF and my uh, GR Corolla. Um, so I, I'm not sure. I might go with a cheaper brand too, maybe Yokohama. Uh, the one thing I do like about my Michelins I have on this car is there is a huge lip guard on there um, that makes it definitely a lot, I would say safer to drive this car um, on regular roads. So, um, you know, that being said, uh, probably I will stay with the AS3, the ASs, the all seasons for this car, um, just to kind of protect the rims. Um, you know, it's crazy. I paid, I think like, even with discounts, I paid around 1800 bucks per rim for my car. And surprisingly, HRE still makes pretty affordable rims. I mean, they're still around the $1,800 range, but now they offer like, I think $5,000 rims. Um, I think they're carbon fiber barrel rims with 3D printing. It's crazy what they offer now in terms of rims. Um, you know, I, I don't know if I would get something like that. Uh, but definitely if I got a GT3, I would very strongly consider uh, getting, I think they're called Manthe, Manthe rims. I don't know if you're just allowed to just get the rims, um, but I'd like to get those rims. And if I can't get those, I would get, you know, HREs for my GT3. I'd like to change out the rims. Uh, probably because I'm not going to mess around too much with it. Uh, I probably put a body kit on there and rims. That's about it. Um, but man, oh gosh, I mean, just thinking about that gets me excited. Um, you know, as well as moving to LA, which is something I really, really would like to do. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and uh, take my dogs to the park. I'm going to put a setup in the GR Corolla so I can talk to you guys in the GR Corolla as well. I um, mean, you kind of hear the uh, exhaust and engine in that car too. Uh, just, you know, based on what I guess my mic can pick up. So I'll see you guys in a bit. It's a good looking car for, I guess, what it is, uh, you know, a rally car. Um, definitely the front end, by far the best. The three quarters is beautiful on this car as well. Uh, the side view, yeah, I would say it's, it's good, it's good. But definitely the rear view, it's, I don't know, it's a little silly looking to be honest, but it still looks real nice. Um, definitely I feel like, oh, you guys hear that? I'm wondering what that was. Uh, but definitely it's a, it's a good looking car. Every uh, I noticed all of the um, air vents are functional on this car, uh, but since it is a circuit edition, the front, I guess the front uh, side ones, they still block those off because of the wing. Um, you know, honestly, I'd really like to get the GRMN carbon fiber wing. I'm not sure if you guys saw it. I'll put a link below for it in the video. It is an absolutely beautiful wing. I think it sells for, I think, six Gs right now. But uh, if they do come up with one for the GR Corolla, uh, man, I, I'd put up the 6Gs for that. I mean, it is such a beautiful wing, and it really does complete the car. And definitely, in my opinion, it will increase the value of the car more than the cost, just because of the carbon fiber piece that you added on. Um, specifically, I think only for the Circuit Edition, though, or the Marizo, in my opinion. Um, but I guess that's to be determined by the market later on in the future. All right, guys, now we're in the in-car view. I mean, obviously, it's because it's a manual car. I, uh, you know, can't video <laughs> and uh, shift at the same time. I mean, I guess I could, but it, I, I think it would be a horrible quality video. And uh, it just, obviously, it's very dangerous to do something like that. Um, but yeah, GR Curl, it rides real nice. It still has that problem that the 23s have. Uh, for those of you who are GR Corolla uh, drivers, you know what I'm talking about. It is the tire pressure gauge. It just keeps resetting after uh, every ride if you kind of wait long enough between each ride. Uh, obviously, Toyota is aware of it from what I've read in the forums, but they haven't fixed it yet. 
Um, I did discover, I think, a new issue, and that is sometimes my iPhone. And it's an iPhone issue, I think. You have to get a new iPhone, really, updated iPhone to make it work. But if you have old OS, an old OS on your iPhone, it, it has a hard time connecting to the uh, Apple CarPlay sometimes, so it'll just reset everything, um, you know, because you'll be going into, like, guest mode. And I haven't set up my guest mode. So it's all can be addressed. I honestly feel like these are minor issues, um, you know. The engine is what I care most about, and since it came from a GR Yaris, which has been, you know, made in order to sustain rally, and on top of that, I think they put forged internals into this engine in order to increase the uh, horsepower. It, it makes me very confident in the uh, ability of this car. And, uh, you know, I don't go crazy in my cars, but I do like to drive them uh, spirited. So definitely it's good to know uh, for this car that I can do it confidently. Uh, interestingly enough about this car is that it kind of, from what I've read, it it kind of rides like a STI where you really need to put it up in the high RPMs in order to really uh, unleash the power of this engine. Um, something I notice is in the lower RPMs, it just quickly goes up to 4,000 RPM and I think the turbo doesn't even kick on until 4,500. Uh, whereas my WRX is complete opposite, the turbo kicks on at 2,500 and it kicks off at around 4, 41, 42. So after 41, 42,100 RPM, it really doesn't do much. I mean, the car has no real power. So given that I keep my cars stock tuned, uh, I basically shift my WRX at 4,000. And I, I'm okay with that. I mean, I think the car is plenty fast. It serves its purpose. Um, absolutely love the WRX. It rides so beautifully. I don't even know if, uh, I don't know how GT3 rides, but hearing that a GT3, uh, the 911, that's what I'm talking about, the 911 GT3, I heard that they have a lot of spherical bearings uh, for bushings in those cars. And I mean, I basically did that for all of my uh, bushings in the WRX. So my guess is that the WRX rides like the 911, which I absolutely love. Um, you know, I can't, I can't imagine having a faster engine, like a, you know, manual. Oh man, I mean, that's kind of the reason why I got the GR Corolla too. Um, you know, I'd want to change this out to all spherical bearings and uh, lots of bracing just to appreciate, um, you know, the purpose of this car and rally inspiration. But yeah, this car, it's it's real nice. I only have 375 75 miles on there. Well, 374, about to hit 75. So I, I really don't want to unleash the engine just yet. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a pretty nice car for what you get. I mean, these... Uh, Alcantara seats are real nice. I really like them. Um, would I rather have leather? Uh, I would say yes. Uh, not, not leather, I'm sorry. Would I rather have the faux leather, I guess is what you would call it. Um, I would say yeah. It's, it's definitely nice to have that faux leather that is in my uh, GS350. It's pretty nice. I feel like it's a little bit more luxurious than the Alcantara. Um, plus Alcantara, I, I feel like it's a little hard to take care of, uh, but it is kind of like a luxury race thing, so I, I do understand having it in my car is kind of like a designation thing. So I, I guess I can appreciate that. Um, but you know, other than that, you know, I'm, I'm bedding in the pads for this car still. I really want to get that imprint, that pad imprint where the pad kind of like broke off a lot of crap onto the rotor. I'm trying to make sure that gets worn off before it turns into uh, I think what's called creosote or whatever. Um, once it turns into that, it's it's not going to go away, and that's going to be a major problem. So I have been bedding in the pads. Uh, in fact, I think I'll do a little bed in right now, just a, a very light bed in. Um, you know, I just go 70 miles per hour, and then I break of, of light brakeness all the way down to 20. Uh, of course, make sure no one's behind me when I do that, um, and make sure that I don't come to a complete stop. My uh, GS350, I actually did do it by accident too. I put a pad imprint into the uh, Rembo rotors. Uh, it. It did eventually disappear, luckily, um, just because I, I drove that car and uh, did the bed in again to uh, get rid of that. So um, that was okay. This one is a little bit more difficult for some reason. Um, I think that bed in was in too long, maybe. Uh, I'm pretty sure those pads were stuck together at least for a week or so, um, you know, because I'm pretty sure they washed it and just left it in the lot for like a week. And that pad just basically rusted onto the rotor. Um, I don't know if you guys can hear. Can you guys hear the the exhaust it, it it's it's pretty nice it's got a low tone to it um you know on the highway there is a drone you can hear it It sounds like a like an airplane like a propeller airplane <laughs> all right guys well we're in the uh, rcf now i'm pretty sure you guys can tell it's a beautiful two-seater got the blue seat belt and the leather driving gloves 
Fratelli Orsini. Uh, the reason why I got this brand, Fratelli Orsini, is only the reason is because uh, Lexus, when they give out their free driving gloves, I guess as appreciation gifts, um, they actually use Fratelli Orsini, and it has it's black with blue stitching, and it's got the S Sport logo on it. Man, I would love to get my hands on a set of those, but I'm pretty sure they, they cost uh, quite a bit. And I think I only paid like 80 bucks for these, and, and these are they're real nice. I really like them. Um, so they feel real good, and I think they're made of like lambskin or something like that. But you know, it, it, if you if you want your Alcantara steering wheel to last, as well as your Alcantara shift knob, which is what um, RCF Track Edition came with, um, you know, it's pretty much a requirement to have leather gloves. And to be honest, it's pretty cool. I mean, for a car that you don't drive daily to use leather gloves to, um, you know, be able to, to drive with. So it, it's quite the experience. It, it gives the driving dynamic, uh, you know, a big up in level in terms of luxury. Uh, I definitely feel a lot more exhilarated. Um, even though it's not, you know, a Bugatti or a 911, uh, I certainly feel like I'm driving a super car-ish type of vehicle. I understand this is not a supercar, uh, you know, it, it, but definitely 472 horsepower V8 with tons of carbon fiber and definitely the carbon ceramic uh, brakes along with forged BBS wheels. That definitely puts this car in a different uh, level. Um, I, I guess I would put it in the JDM, like, you know, obviously if this is JDM, you know, cream of the crop, uh, but in terms of just, you know, versus, you know, I guess Porsche, which is, or BMW, um, it's not I suppose as high up. Um, although I, I, I feel like it should compete with BMW, um, but the performance is just not there compared to BMW. But the luxury and comfort definitely is. And of course the reliability. And to be honest, I just, I love Lexus. I mean, this is definitely a Lexus enthusiast car. I can only hope in the future that this car will appreciate as more and more people um, you know, want this car. It's gonna get discontinued in 2024. Um, I'm wondering how much the 2023s are going to be worth. And of course, I'm wondering if the Fuji Speedway Edition, the only edition that was numbered and came with that beautiful matte blue paint, I'm wondering if those values will skyrocket for that car. Um, you know, I'm, I'm guessing in 2027, 2028. So let's find out. I mean, I'm going to have this car for, you know, hopefully, you know, <laughs> a very, very, very extended period of time. I have no intentions of selling this car. And I certainly feel the enjoyment driving this RCF, specifically the track edition. I feel that any other RCF, I really would not appreciate. I would be wanting to make the RCF like the track edition. So I would have spent so much money getting the carbon fiber hood, uh, the, making an attempt to get the rear wing, which probably is possible, but maybe very, very, very difficult because the rear wings are actually made by a separate company. So I'm not 100% sure that even Lexus will approve it um, unless you have absolute proof that this car belongs to you, uh, track edition. But the carbon ceramic brakes, you can get those. They're made by Brembo. They don't seem to be hard to get. Um, of course, they cost a lot of money. Um, I actually have seen a huge forum uh, thread on the RCF track edition ceramic uh, brake upgrades. A lot of people have been doing it. Um, it seems to be just fine. I think someone did it uh, using uh, I think GT, uh, what is it, the uh, Nissan GTR uh, brake pads and brake rotors to save some money. Uh, but honestly, if you're going to do it right, get you know get the Lexus, uh, all the Lexus stuff. Um, I mean, those brakes, they're so beautiful on this car, the carbon ceramics. Um, I find myself staring at you know the wheels um, and the brake setup um, so often. Um, and of course, a lot of people buy the BBS wheels too. These are beautiful wheels. They're actually a good purchase um, if you have like an RC. I guess, or maybe a GS. I think maybe even a GS, these would be nice uh, additions to get the BBS uh, RC uh, F track edition wheels. Um, but you do, I believe, have to put spacers on them, I believe. I'm not 100% sure. Um, but with the cost alone, to be honest, actually, now I think about it, the cost alone of getting these wheels, you might as well just get a set of HREs, uh, custom made, uh, you know, made flush to your car um, with the perfect offset. Uh, but I mean, it's just a beautiful car. And back to where I was saying, if you try to add up, I try to, you know, I added up all of the stuff. Like, oh, if I get like an RC or an IS500, and I, you know, I try to get a carbon roof. I'm sorry, not a, car a carbon hood. Uh, you know, the uh, carbon front splitter, the side skirts, 
uh, carbon ceramic brakes. Uh, of course, I would get HREs most likely. Um, you know, and I started looking at all these other carbon fiber parts. And actually, the seat partition for this car, I checked myself. It, it actually is carbon fiber too. It's an eight thousand dollar piece. If you check online at parts.lexus.com, there is a specific part for the RCF track edition. And I didn't know this, but um, only the track edition has the seat partition. The Part that goes between the seat and the trunk made of carbon fiber. All the other ones is made of metal. Uh, I, I don't know how much weight that saves, but dang, that is freaking awesome. And I mean, to be honest, like that really does offset the uh, missed, I guess, luxury of not having uh, reverse fold mirrors, which kind of sucks. Uh, I have to manually fold the mirrors down to check uh, my rear wheels, uh, make sure that I don't. Uh, get too close to anything and that's on honestly backing out of my steep driveway as well um yeah i gotta have those uh those mirrors point down so i can watch the rims i'm, I'm sorry not the rims but the tires uh when they go down the uh, steep approach um that and you know you lose of course heated steering wheel uh, ventilated seats uh, that's actually kind of that kind of sucks too to lose um but other than that i mean this car is great uh but like i was saying adding up all of that stuff it just came out to like a hundred like fifty thousand dollar car total and i was just like forget it man you know i'd rather just get the rcf track edition rather than trying to get an rc and turn it into a track edition it just didn't make any sense to me um i thought these were really hard to get honestly i found out later on that all i had to i mean basically i just called my lexus dealer and said i want an rcf track edition i thought it had to be some special approval or whatever and they were just like yeah we'll get one for you and they got one for me and I found out that they only have nine of these um, in the United States. There's eight that were ordered in 2023. And then there's one that is for sale now on the market. It's a used RCF track edition. I think it has like 2,000 miles on it. Uh, I'm pretty sure that one was the press car um, that was sold after the, uh, you know, I guess, you know, after they started releasing these, uh, you know, RCF track editions for 2023. But yeah, this is actually a very, very, rare model the 2023 because it was special order only um so it, they only made eight of them now the 2024s i don't know if those are really special order and the reason why i say that is because i see some on sale already uh they're all the ultra white color i don't really know why they chose that color uh, rather than black or the dark gray um, but i'm guessing a lot of people like white uh, for their race cars i personally don't i like a darker color car um, so I definitely don't mind this incognito gray. It's kind of like a Nardo gray. Um, it, it actually looks really beautiful. Uh, all the carbon fiber, um, as well as the ceramic brake uh, break, uh, calipers, they all have a, you know, it all matches really well. Um, you know, gray goes with pretty much everything. So it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful spec, to be honest. I personally wouldn't have spec'd it out like this. I would have gotten black. Um, but I'm actually glad that Lexus spec'd it out this way. Uh, otherwise, I wouldn't have gotten it. And I would have gotten it in black. So it's good to have a little bit of variety in the garage. And it's also nice to have a car where they have to choose the color for you. It makes it feel a little bit more special edition. <laughs> but um, anyways, I'm, I'm going to enjoy this car. Uh, absolutely love the RCF track edition. It's getting a little bit dark. I kind of wish I drove it during the daytime. Ah, man, it's just oh, it's so nice. I cannot believe I got this car. Oh, man, I'm just so thankful for having it. And I'm so glad that I'm able to share it with fellow um, car enthusiasts, specifically my Lexus enthusiast. I know you guys hopefully are enjoying this footage as much as I am. Have a great week. Bye-bye.